G'day. My name is Matthew Hamm and I work on a vineyard as an assistant vineyard manager in Melbourne. I'm going to present to you my PowerPoint on my self-evaluation as a communicator, other people's perspective on me as a communicator, and my communication experiences with people from other cultures that I've had at work. Task 1. As a communicator, I think I'm okay with people I both know and don't know, whether at work or in my personal life. I work in a position where I have to help run a group of workers and deal with multiple suppliers and contractors, both in person and over the phone daily, which previous to that position I found hard to do with anyone I did not know. Talking to older and more experienced people at work made me less confident or lowered my self-esteem, especially when giving work orders. But as I gained more experience in doing this, my confidence has increased. I feel I portray more positive body language by standing firmer and delivering my messages clearly without doubt or hesitation. I also try to use eye contact while speaking or listening to fully engage who I'm communicating with or listening to. During my work career, I've had a number of bosses and colleagues who I believe were very strong communicators, and I try to take from them the parts of communication which I thought were good, again, such as strong body language and firm eye contact. I work with large numbers of people from different cultures, mostly Thais and Islanders, which I will cover more on task three. But I have to use a number of communication concepts such as time with them. I have, I have to talk very slowly when explaining a work task or repeat what I'm saying to get their understanding if they speak English. If not, I incorporate body language to physically demonstrate what I want them to do or overemphasize good or bad work with positive or negative body language or as simple as a thumbs up, which is a universal communication symbol for sweet as. Growing up, my dad used humour in most situations when communicating, and I do also. I'm not always sure if this is the best way of communicating to others in different situations, but because I had grown up around it and do so so much myself, it's just a habit. I'm self-aware of how I communicate in this way, but I think it not only makes the person or people I'm talking to more receptive or engaged in what I'm saying, but they seem more open or comfortable in having a conversation with me because the mood is lightened. Task two. The two people I've gathered feedback from are both work colleagues and one also being a very close friend. From a work perspective, both sets of feedback were positive and thought I was a relatively good communicator. Relating back to task one, where one of them said it was sometimes hard to know if I was being serious or not a lot of the time. This sort of feedback makes me understand the importance of approaching conversations more maturely, because not all situations or communications require humour. The appropriate message or task may not be communicated properly if the person I am having the conversation with thinks I am not serious about what I am saying. I was praised for my good listening skills, which one of my workmates said helps engage them in the conversation more and makes them think I do care for what they are saying. This encourages me because I think I really do try hard to listen well and be fully engaged in what someone is saying to me, even if I might not totally agree with what they're saying or I'm distracted by things like tiredness. I try not to just nod and agree when listening to someone, but also add on to the conversation with comments or questions relevant to the subject. Task 3. In a previous slide covering Task 1, I briefly talked about my frequent workplace interactions with people from various cultures. To use one experience as an example, I will analyse and reflect on the communication process used dealing with a large number of Thai workers that had to be sent back to redo an unsatisfactory task. The group of Thai workers undertook a job in the vineyard on a contract rate which did not meet the standards that were set upon them. So I had to follow up with the crew and their supervisor to explain to them that they had to go back to complete the job without further being paid. In this situation, I felt sympathetic to the group because they were not being paid, but I could not show this while communicating the message to them because it would affect my self-esteem, which they could have further taken advantage of and deemed me to be a pushover. Ties are culturally very polite people, so I would let them know what they have to do, but compliment them on areas that were of standard to encourage them to go back and keep their work to a high standard. I had to keep firm eye contact with the supervisor and portray strong body language to help push the message across that we were not particularly happy with the task they had done. 
Because they speak little or no English, I explained to them what they needed to do in the environment where the task was completed, unsatisfactory, to, which was in the vineyard block. That way I could tell them verbally and demonstrate to them myself how I wanted the task to be completed while standing in the vineyard block. Thanks for watching and evaluating my presentation on my self-reflection as a communicator.